Live from New York, it's the Cube covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by HortonWorks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal and noise, or have our own events. The event we're having is Big Data NYC, right in conjunction with Strata Hadoop, which is one block, 100 yards away at the Javits. We've been here for three days, third, third day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, George Gilbert, Big Data Analyst at Wikibon, and Omar Traman, CEO and co-founder of Rokana. Formerly scaling data, if you're inside the ropes and know the industry history, welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you, it's great to be back, and yeah. uh, it's great to be here, just a block away from Strata, it's fantastic. You're, uh, just for the folks out there, uh, just some background on you, you were one early employee at Vertica. That's right. Built that out uh, early on, then they ended up selling to HP, and, and is a flagship, by the way, of their entire big data it's offering. It's gotten pretty significant traction there. Um, it's pretty impressive what they're doing built it. out there, first go-to-market um, organization with customers, Take right. a dupe to the market for the, that first leg of the journey. That was uh, that was uh, a very adventurous time in the <laughs> early, early days where it took <laughs> weeks and weeks just to set up a Hadoop cluster. Weeby Data, the co one of the co-founders, started a company and now you started a company called Scaling Data now called Rokana, That's which right. is now branded. You guys are out doing business, so we let's are. get down to it. Rokana is good, the new name. Yep. What's going on with the company? Give us the update. Funding, staff, Customers, what do you got? So we uh, we raised our Series B round earlier this year. That was also in concert with uh, rebranding the company. So Rokana is root cause analysis. That's exactly what we do. We bring a big data take to global IT operations. Uh, we announced our product GA earlier this summer, and uh, we've been talking a little bit about what customers are doing with it in retail, monitoring end to end from the point of sale systems all the way to the back office, in financial services, globally across the company, uh, in gaming, uh, some of the largest gaming providers in the world, uh, using us to make sure that their users have a very good experience, low latency access to the games. That's the kind of high end operations, next generation operations that our customers are using us so for. So you really, to me, the poster child of what's going on in this big data world. Certainly a startup, kind of got some beachhead, you get a nice use case, root cause analysis, but really if you look at it, you have experience understanding the database, the large scale piece of it. We've seen the, the worlds of the Facebooks, you were obviously early at Cloudera. You see the big picture going on under the hood, but yet the killer app is analytics. Yeah. The end game for everyone, and as a startup, you're navigating a very competitive landscape Splunk has certainly done some great stuff with log file analysis. They have, they have. And they're now trying to get into security, move up the food chain, mm -hmm. if you will, from you know, data exhaust, uh, taking out the, 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 the trash, if you will, the log <laughs> analysis. And essentially, no one wanted to do that with log, log files. Yeah, was, it's just sitting there, the waiting for someone to look at it and do something with it. But ingestion and turning value into the data really is what the successful companies are doing. Yeah. That's kind of what you guys are doing. Can you explain this? this entry strategy for you, where are you putting your beachhead stake in the ground, how are you guys setting up camp, and what's your growth strategy? Sure, so we, um, this is actually what we realized coming from kind of a big data background, is that um, it wasn't just about picking yet another source of data and trying to apply uh, some kind of search-based brute force understanding of it. That was a good first step, and I think that's going to be useful in some domains. Really, it's looking across the organization and saying how do all these streams of data fit together, and what kind of purpose-built analytics and visualization can help my operators, not just my analysts, actually take advantage of all that data and improve the efficiency across the entire organization. So a couple, couple notables, uh, Don Brown, Eric Sammer, both rock star, uh, DevOps kind of guys I call them, I mean for lack of a better word, no, I don't take that personal, but er I think Eric, Eric I think would take slight offense maybe to DevOps, but well, that's he wrote the book on, <laughs> he did, on, on a Hadoop lot of the operations. stuff around uh, um, enterprise related stuff and Don's security background, both yep. Cloudera employees early on. That's right. Um, how are they, piecing into it, I mean, if you just connect the dots, you got a little bit of security, now that's enterprise table stakes. What's amazing is that uh, Don and Eric were both customers, right? Don was building out data center software at Earthlink back in the day, he was working in the security space, Eric was running data centers at Experian, they've used every piece of software under the sun, and then they spent years deploying big database solutions, and now they're like, well, big data is actually what we've been looking for our entire careers, let's go build it. So when we go and talk to customers, it's not like this is the first time we're hearing their use yeah. case, we've been living it. And so we know exactly what to build, we know exactly how they 
they need to see the data and just deliver it out of the box. So Eric, obviously a great guy, and, and you know, we get to know you, Jim, I'll call him the ops dev guy, not the <laughs> dev ops guy, because he wrote the book, Hadoop Operations. <laughs> but this is really, if you look at cloud and IT, a mm -hmm. couple things, operations IT guys are heavily involved in this hybrid, IT, hybrid cloud game. We heard that at VMworld, yep. loud and clear. But now you move over to what's going on in the big data space, it's data in flight, as Merv Adrian says, yep. is the new trend, and what's happening with is that there's a lot of stream processing going on. That is like the big deal, and George, Systems of Intelligence kind of teases that, so I got to ask you, as data moves, sometimes it may not even hit a database, so to be real time, you got to have an architecture that can be data centric, but not constrained by some data storage. What are, what's yes, your take on all yes, that? So yes and no. What we're, what we're finding is that you have a lot of real time processing, you want the business to be nimble and responsive but that's not always going to go right. There's no such thing as 100% perfect technology, right? There's always going to be some problem. And if you don't have a record of that, if you can't merge the real time with the historical, build analytics on the historical and understand whether the real time's going right or not, it could be, I mean, even if it's seconds after the fact, you've just missed how many cycles of processing that was just wrong, right? You have errors that you didn't catch. Yeah, it's a and miss, those basically, cascade. basically a miss. Missing, it's, missing it's a key miss. data. So the faster you go, the more misses potentially, like statistically, or the more misses you're going to have. So you need to marry kind of the historical and the real time in one system. And so, um, since every customer's um, configuration for their application services and their infrastructure is different, how do you build that conceptual model of mm -hmm. what's the way it should behave, and then you know how do you know when it's not behaving? Right. It's um. It's actually less a function of uh, good and bad. Um, it's very difficult to build software, as you point out, that uh, knows that going in something is behaving well or behaving poorly. Uh, but it turns out humans are really good at that. They just can't look at a billion data points and you know a bunch of log files and figure that out. Right. What we can tell them is this system is behaving differently. It was like this, we built a model and we understand that this is sort of the pattern, the fingerprint for this collection of systems, this application server, database server, network, you know, this is how they interoperate. And now, the application has slowed down a little, your top KPIs, your uh, uh, retail transactions are slowing, your gamers are not as active, and we've been seeing these glitches in the network at the same time. If you pop that pattern up, then a human's going to make the connection, and they're going to be able to solve the problem very quickly. But how do you, um, how do you help identify which are the root causes and which yeah. are the symptoms? Yeah. Uh, that's part of what's the secret sauce under the covers. So that's right. I'm um, <laughs> and, uh, and basically, what we do with the analytics is we present the information in a way where people can sort of visually look at correlations and try and understand what the causality is. So it's hard, again, for a machine to say this is authoritatively where the root cause happened, but if I can guide you to here's two systems that are connected and this one started misbehaving before this one did, then you can start piecing together oh, this happened, then this happened, then this happened but you're looking, you've now narrowed down from hundreds of billions of data points to just the systems that are actually related so to a given problem. If I were to pin, pin down what I just heard, it almost sounds like time is the key. Time is the key. The, okay. Time is the key. Um, yeah, Eric and uh, Eric's a, a musician actually originally um, uh, as, as a hobby and he had, had it as an occupation before he got into software. Uh, he likes to say that the music is in the rests Right? It's a lot about what's missing in the data sets, and so when you look at it from kind of that perspective, you're looking for the gaps, the differences, not just the, the melody is, right, and the, and the harmony behind that. That's the data center functioning properly. Right? Where, where are things deviating from that? And you have to look at that over a sort of a time spectrum. Can you use the abnormal, f um, abnormal behavior to put back into history to help you with identifying slightly different anomalies when they yeah. happen in the future? Yeah, what, um, part of the stuff we've been looking at is how do you trace, for example, an issue that's emerging and say, well, when did this actually, it's been happening a lot, right? right? Every Monday morning we have this little glitch. Can you show me every Monday for the past few months and just kind of time align those for a specific subset of systems that are related to it right. and just piece in and out what do I want to compare. Um, that's an incredibly powerful tool if someone can just point and click. They don't have to write a magic incantation. They don't have to be a superpower user. Um, you know, it's, it's like, a, um, it's like a, a, a broker on Wall Street just kind of picking these are the indices and these are the stocks that I want to look at and they just pop up. So which verticals are you guys playing? And obviously security comes to mind one. 
Um, where are your beachhead customers? Yeah. When does a customer know when to call you? Well, can you share, kind of, I'm asking you're a startup, so you're now again navigating yeah, a competitive absolutely. space. So give me an example of the verticals you're successful in, what verticals you're eyeing, kind of adjacent verticals, yeah. and then what's the use case for a customer that are watching uh, to say, hey, I got to call. Yeah. I got to call these guys up and get some we're, um, So where we're seeing early adoption is in people who have uh, pretty complicated systems, right? Our customers are still buying and deploying new mainframes and they have private cloud. Uh, they run their own data centers. Sometimes they're hybrid. They have data centers and they use cloud providers. So it's complex environments. Um, they are sort of Fortune 500, Fortune 500 class type of customer. And what they find is that their business is converging, right? So the uh, example uh, I like to use is, um, I can do uh, banking on my mobile phone and access dozens of different banking applications all through one interface. But there's probably 50 monitoring systems running each of those applications. So when I have a problem, there's no single IT person who can look at one place and say, oh yeah, this is exactly where Omer's transaction kind of went awry. It's because we had a database glitch because a disk died. Does, does that mean the legacy systems management uh, systems that were put in place to support the old applications, the old sort of stovepipes, does that mean you sort of have to go around them to make sense out of what's going on for the whole I, landscape? I think you need to take a, a universal look in order to understand which you should even pay attention to. There's no way you can put all the monitors side by side and as a human process those and say, oh yeah, this is the one that actually looks different and it's correlated to that one. So before you even get into sort of the, um, sort of the legacy purpose built or the siloed monitoring, you want to say, am I even looking in the right place? And can I, as even a level one operator, actually get to where the root cause of any given problem is and do that extremely quickly. So it, it sounds like you could point someone to one of the earlier systems management products, just say it sounds like the root cause is in there, yeah. go there. Yeah, we can definitely do that. In many cases you can actually just solve the problem uh, within the system. Okay. So, so for example, nice. we had a customer who deployed our software, uh, within a few minutes they noticed some misconfiguration that was causing a spike in for activity, and they start looking at the log files, and oh yeah, we don't know those IP addresses, this is an attack. And what happened? Oh, there was a firewall misconfiguration that was flagged just a few minutes earlier. So within the tool, they don't have to go to their networking tool or their firewall tool, they can see exactly yeah. what sort of the time sequence of events was, and yeah. identify the root cause. So it was interesting, I noticed that Rick Miner's on your board. Um, uh, Rich, yeah. Rich, Rich Miner, and he was actually the co-founder of Android, which we all know. It was interesting, we had a, an interview um, last week with, uh, the head of um, Swisscom, mm -hmm. and I asked him about malware. Yeah. He says 50% Android, 50% iPhone. Really? And like, well, you know, so it's not all I Android that's got the malware. And, and I want to bring this up because talk about security. And then he said, I want to get your thoughts on this, security is an assumed penetration game now, yeah. not work on waiting. The hackers are in. So you have the question of how bad, So this yeah. comes back down to some of the things you're talking about. Okay, if you assume that this might be a really killer tool for that, because you say, okay, if you assume they're already in, you're looking for the patterns, this is where the tech will add value. So I got to ask you, one, do you believe in that? And what's your position on that? And two, what's under the hood? Machine learning, is yeah. a lot of math involved? Because yeah. there's a lot of events happening, a lot of processing happening. We do, I mean, we do assume, we believe kind of in this world model where you're already penetrated, right? The hackers are lying, waiting. If you think you're not, you're just not looking at the right systems. And that's step one in the answer, is actually look everywhere. So much data is falling on the ground because people think it's not relevant or not important until you discover an IP address from some unknown you know, rogue nation in your HVAC system, your point of sale system, right? The little thing on the side, the, the mobile phone app that no one thought was actually relevant because it was just a yeah. project you're rolling out. And so step one is collecting it all. Once you have all these data points, that's the point it's where- It's not just the network either. I talk about that because it's, it's not just the network, it's apps too. It's apps, it's embedded applications, uh, it's the services behind them, it's the endpoint network devices, so not just the network server, like firewalls and proxy servers, it's the database servers. Everything, if it's software, it's an entry point. If it's firmware, it's an entry point, right? That's the, that's the challenge that people are seeing today. There's, there's, there's so many places that people can get well, in. I know, the other investor you have is General Catalyst, big that's time right. investor. Steve Harry's been on theCUBE many times saying the perimeter's dead, mm -hmm. and he's been on this thesis all day long. He's exactly right, he's um, exactly right. Do S enterprises get this? I mean, I, gotta, I mean, you're out there, I mean, you're getting they're traction, so but. They're starting to, they're starting to. I think what we're seeing is that both the CIO and the CISO are starting to realize that there is so much they don't know. 
And when it comes to the point of their responsibilities, control over infrastructure, control over security, if they don't if they don't have visibility, if they don't know what's going on, they can't control what's going on. Omar, I got to ask you what's going on in Hadoop world, now called <laughs> Strata Hadoop. It was once called Hadoop world when we were there. Um, but uh, the reality is, is that there's some things going on here that no one's talking about, but everyone's talking about. It's kind of like the public secret. One is cloud mm -hmm. and security. The conversations are just starting this year, but yet yeah. Gardner's data shows that 50% of big data is deployed in the cloud, and security is still being kicked around. Yep. So those are two key conversations. Can you comment on what, what's going on in the show around cloud and security, and then what does the big data piece of, of your solution and the bigger macro ecosystem deal with these? Yeah. I mean, are people like putting their head in the sand? Is it just they don't know? What's the status of the market? Uh, Picked it. This is a weird visual. I think they've been buried in the sand, and the sand's finally starting to like clear off, and they can see the sky. Uh, you know, the R and D projects, which is what's driven a lot of early cloud adoption, are starting to come home. People are trying to figure out what workloads are cloud and what aren't, um, and people are starting to get more comfortable with the fact that the cloud is secure, or it's at least as secure as the you know perceived perimeter that they were creating around their data center. If you don't have a perimeter, if it's been breached, what's the difference between on premise and uh, and cloud? And so now we're starting to see this movement. People from on-premise are adding the cloud. People on cloud are starting to add a little on-premise. It's becoming a very hybrid world and security just gets 10 times harder. And security is just one of those things everyone's just scratching their heads, looking for answers pretty much yeah. at this point. We that, it's, that. The, it's the fear of the unknown unknowns, right? Uh, harken <laughs> back to a, a nice catchphrase. Um, it's what have I missed? And that's yeah. where, to your earlier question, that's where analytics come into play. Can we surface things? Can a machine, by virtue yeah. of using analytics and machine learning, visually tell you that something looks different than it did? And that's where you should focus George and I time. were at the Facebook Scale Conference two weeks ago. One of the things we noticed was that's what they're processing in terms of the streams is so massive in volume that we were just scratching our heads saying, statistically, can they see everything? I mean, so that's another problem, the yep. volume and velocity of the data, so, so how do you guys view that? Are you doing anything in that area? Is that something that you, is a use case for you? Is yeah. that uh, something on your radar? We, uh, we've, we view it as a function of how do you surface it for, so that someone can, can get it, right? Until we get to the point that there's a perfect circle, full automation where the machines run the world, right? The, the sort of the AI phase. Until then, right, humans are pretty critical to running from a security and operations perspective. We had over 100 people here last night for our presentation of George's new research. We had the end user panel. Um, so I got to ask you the end user question. I'm going to put my, my uh, end user hat on practitioner. I'm a CXO at a corporation. When do I have a problem that you need? Describe to me the, my use case yeah. that where you can come in and help me. What is the, for the folks out there who might not have heard of you guys as a startup, you're growing. When do I know when to call you? What is my environment look yeah. like? When do I pick up the phone and call Workana right away? We have very, very simple questions, right? Where are you breached? It's not, are you breached? Where are you breached? If you don't know, you need Rokana. Where are you having capacity and performance issues? If you can't point to the exact place, you have to call us. What are the top 10 issues that are plaguing your users that you can fix from an infrastructure and software perspective? If you don't have that sitting on your desk already printed out, you got to call Rokana. So it's an ops solution. This is operations this is and security operations. Security operations, yeah, we, yeah, we put that. under that bucket. Exactly. Okay, so, I'm, I'm, so the, but the use case would be, okay, shoot, I got, security, if I if we had a breach, I'm fired, because that's what happens when yep. someone gets breached. Yeah. They might be already in camp inside the, inside the facility. And two, are my servers getting whacked and are they misconfigured? Yeah, Those, well, are my users, are my, are my delivering the experience that my users expect? Or SLA internal or right. external? Ultimately, it's the KPI of the business. It could be something at the millisecond level because you're online gaming. It could be something that's uh, in a physical location because people are doing yeah. self-service checkout. Um, it could be just people checking their uh, you know, retirement accounts or trying to so do online nice transactions. Model. You've got the application piece, which is SLA based. Mm -hmm. It could be internal or external. You have a misconfiguration of some weird op thing that happened through some you know, automation, automation done bad. You see lots of, the, you know, server got rebooted or the new Docker image got floated up, yeah. Yeah, orchestration is new, right? I mean, people are automating workloads. And it has failures and you got to figure out, and they don't surface immediately, right? It's something yeah. that you notice well so done. So you guys line. are ops dev. I mean, I would put you guys in the category of. I like ops dev. Ops like dev. Ops well, dev, this, this is what we find. So Pat Gelsinger at, at VMworld said, you know, of all the DevOps stuff that they've been getting into, they've done the surveys. Mm -hmm. And the attendees were 80% IT ops. Yep. 
not so much dev, test dev under the, under the you know, local host well, under the under The, the IT ops guys are underwater, right? And they need help and they need smarter software. The dev guys, they don't really want to carry pagers and they know how to write software. Yeah, and, right? and they feel good right now. There's a lot of good tooling out there for the dev guys. Not so the much for the ops guys. pushing it to the infrastructure as code and then the, the ops guys are saying, oh my God, we know this trend's coming. So it seems like they're kind of like changing the airplane engine out in midstream for a lot of these companies. It is, it is. And as I said, if you're in a world where you just uh, you know, migrated to a new mainframe and you're deploying a hybrid cloud solution, like try to fit both yeah. of those in your head and build an operating model around it, right? that's challenging. Going back to the, the Facebook at scale conference that um, we were at a couple weeks ago, um, one of the Google PMs said something interesting about uh, running you know, their native services, that the way they'll do it that makes it easier to consume is DevOps tools, right. you know, to put the whole thing together. And whether they, you know, how they fit in third parties or whether they fit in third parties is a sort of philosophical discussion between the different yeah. service providers. But how does Rook kind of fit into that world when you're, when you're going to use the cloud native services sort of exclusively. If you are if you are using cloud native exclusively, I think you're still at the scale that you can probably build a single, you know, you have one silo. You have one application domain. Oh, but like very the few companies example. very few yeah. companies yeah. are multi-billion dollar companies and have one platform. Got In it. fact, I'd say probably no one at okay. this point, right? Okay. If you look at all the large successful companies, they grow over time, they adopt new technology, they can't retire the old technologies, okay. and so they work in this hybrid environment, and there isn't a single one-stop shop in order well, to what do all their monitoring. Well, he's basically referring, what I think yeah. you're saying is, the outliers are the Googles. Yeah. Then that everyone in this they IT can control, world They build their own servers, right? They, just, they can control everything, yeah. and it's they need It's not transformational. Right. It's not like they have to do a transformation. Right. Okay. All right, so final question. Um, what's your take on the show? This year, you've seen the evolution. I've seen of this, this since it was like 500 people across town. Give me, give me, and give me the color on that. It's I mean, been put your, put your industry <laughs> hat on. Take your CEO hat off. What is Hadoop World? How has it evolved? Um, um, and what's your take on it? What's do you feel like the big whales are in here too heavy? Does Cloudera have a shot? Um, that storage is now key. What's your take on everything? I think it's finally gotten to the point that there's no longer a question as to what the platform technologies are. Right, uh, even this whole like, is it Spark or is it Hadoop or is it Cassandra? I was talking to someone today who said, you know what, our customers, they use everything, right? They used to buy, uh, you know, DB2 and SQL Server and Oracle, right? They used to have sort of I'm this- I'm an Oracle shop. Right, exactly. I buy that. Now you kind of buy this collection of uh, next generation data management and everyone's looking for, how do I get the most value out of it or what can I do that everyone else is doing to transform their business? A lot of uh, sort of more sophisticated R&D, we're seeing some buyers show up at the show, technologists, senior technology leaders who are saying, you know, we're investing in this, now how does it become strategic to our business? I'll give you the final word. Share with the folks out there watching your startup. Take the opportunity to plug the company, your goals for the year. We haven't been plugging it why, for... <laughs> why should they work with you? Well, we're just like, getting the, the word out for you guys, but I think it's valuable. But you know, as a CEO, share with why they should do business with you and yeah. what your plans are for the next year or so. We, um, so what we see is we're really uh, the first company that's starting to look at monitoring and operations from a global perspective. And so if you are uh, VP infrastructure, if you're a CIO, if you're a CISO, and you're starting to figure out how this sort of mess of tooling actually makes sense, you think big data might actually be the answer behind it, we have an application that solves that problem for you. Omar, well, thanks so much for sharing. Congratulations on your success. Thank you very the much. Startup is a rockin' here inside Big Data NYC. We'll be right back with more after this short break.